This is Twit. The cult of the dead cow. I have uh, very like I have very uh, profound memories of cult of the, of the dead cow from the 1980s when I was using the Commodore 64, connecting to bulletin boards, and I would see these CDC docs rolling around. They were a hacking group uh, from the 80s, and apparently they are still doing some actually pretty important work. They're hard at work on a coding framework for encryption. And the plan is to showcase this at DEF CON, which is coming up next week. Joining me to talk a little bit about this in advance of the Hacker Conference is Joseph Men. Joseph actually wrote the book on the CDC entitled Cult of the Dead Cow, How the Original Hacking Supergroup Might Just Save the World. Recently, though, wrote about this new technology for the Washington Post. So it's good to have you back, Joseph. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's good to be here. Yeah, good to see you. So. Before we get to Valid, which is what the technology is called, before we get to that, kind of catch us up a little bit to date on what the CDC, and by the way, I do mean cult of dead cow for anyone listening, not uh, <laughs> Centers for the Disease Control, but uh, what they've been up to in recent years, um, let alone decades. But in recently, has there been much that we've been seeing from this group aside from this news that we're about to talk about? <laughs> Uh, individual members have done more than the, than the group as a whole. The group as a whole, you know, gets together and talks about uh, things and plots um, privately, and they sort of help each other on their on each other's uh, personal projects. But they haven't had like a big show release uh, for years. Uh, so this is um, this is kind of a return to the glory days. You know, I say the late '90s and early '00s is when they were like. Uh, the, the biggest deals, uh, but they've had a resurgence. Um, actually, honestly, in, in part due to the book, but um, there's been a, sort of a, a broader embrace of hacktivism generally in the last few years, and they're kind of the you know the OGs in that regard. So people have turned to them, and then you know some of the individuals have been making big news. Um, most notably, Mudge Zatko uh, testifying before Congress last year that the uh, the security at Twitter, where he had been head of security, was so bad that it put the company in violation of multiple Federal Trade Commission agreements. And the FTC opened a, a pretty massive investigation that's now ongoing. Mm, OK, so they've kept pretty busy uh, individually. And now together, this technology that they're working on, it's an encryption technology um, called Valid. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, this is the code that the CDC is working on. Who exactly is Valid for? What exactly is it intended to do? And I guess, how does it differ from what we already have out there? So it's really interesting. It is pronounced Valid. You got that right. Um, we'll know more on um, a week from a week from Friday uh, at the, the first day of DEF CON when they're opening the conference uh, with a, uh, an introduction to Valid and, and the technical parts of it. But the idea is that it will um, be a a basis for other people to make apps. Um, the group tends to make intends to make its own apps, including a messaging app uh, and a social networking app. But all of them will have this uh, framework. They're providing like the, the building blocks for this, and it, it sort of combines elements of of BitTorrent. Um, it's a distributed network such that everybody who joins makes the network faster and more effective, uh, and all the apps will interact over that. It'll be end to end encrypted, and the idea is that it will work for anything, messaging uh, or uh, sharing files or even social networking. And in none of the cases will they be harvesting data on the individual. So for the messaging app to be, it will be like Signal, only you don't have to give up your phone number, uh, which makes it actually more secure than Signal if they get it right. So they're, they, um, it's the building blocks or, to, or it's like a one of them described it as a as a house uh, that's not furnished yet. And then the developers, they have to convince the developers to come in and put in some nice furniture, individual apps that will that will run on the valid framework. Interesting. OK, so then it, it occurs to me that without this data collection, um, I mean, at the end of the day, CDC hopefully you know is hoping that that developers will be intrigued by this code base by by what they're doing around encryption uh, intrigued by this idea of a lack of data collection I mean that is kind of at the core of what this uh, is going to be about how how do they entice developers uh, people building products? 
to do this. And, you know, granted, I, I fully realize we, there's only so much we actually know about this. But I mean, from the broad perspective of the fact that like data collection is how so many of these kinds of apps make money nowadays. If you're not making money on that, like what 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 other directions do people turn if they want to use this? So um, there are other ways to make money. You can charge for your app. Uh, you can um, uh, you can have like freemium services. Um, you could you could even advertise if you wanted to. It just can't be this sort of micro targeted advertising, you know, data vacuuming norm uh, that to, that we all love uh, when Facebook and Google and Twitter do to us. Uh, you, you know, you're right that. Um, you know, it, it, it's less obvious a pitch, um, but, you know, there's been a lot of resentment of particularly the biggest tech companies, but also the shadowy data brokers and the ad, you know, the instantaneous ad transactions where everybody is bidding on the right to, you know, sell to a, you know, a given person in their 30s in a given neighborhood who drives a given car. I mean, it's just it's gotten out of control. And I think. You asked me earlier who this is for, and the end user is intended to be regular folks. It's, it, you know, they, Tor is not used by regular folks. They want the apps that are built on Bailout to be used by ordinary folks and people that will be happy not to be targeted by ads and to have their conversations private. So that includes, you know, populations that are more at risk or heavily surveilled, uh, and also just regular people. And I think one thing that's going for it is that people are so fed up with Twitter most lately uh, that they're willing to experiment. I mean, there are all these, you know, attempts at Twitter replacements or partial replacements that are having, you know, surprising numbers of people try it out, you know, right away. So I think there is clearly an appetite for something other than the giants we all know and love slash hate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then is that the biggest challenge that you think they they face uh, in getting people to use this, the, the monetary aspect, or are there other potential kind of tech, technological aspects of this that might be a, a hard pill based on what we know? Of course, I think we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll know more after DEF CON. Um, you know, people need to be, you know, so far the testing of it is small. They're going to expand that. So lots of people will be kicking the tires. I mean, one of the things that the you know, it is a framework, so people will have to do some coding on top of it. But the people who are not in the group who have played with it, who've tested it, who've kicked the tires, say it's really good and it should be pretty robust. Um, one of the things it has going for it is that it's majority written by Chris Rue, uh, who is actually a genius. You know, he and Mudge were the two great technical minds of, of you know, the heyday of CDC. He founded a multi-billion dollar company called Veracode, which, you know, it was a, a real innovator in, in binary analysis of, of code. So you didn't have to you know, rely on what vendors of code were telling you the code was going to do. You could, even if you didn't, you know, you, you could find out yourself what it was doing. And sometimes that was different. So really innovative guy. Um, and he's been putting, you know, three years into this. Um, you know, he, he doesn't have to work at all. He's, you know, filthy rich. And he is he hates what the the internet has decayed into i mean a lot of people use i don't know if i can say this on air you know that term in blankification um mm -hmm. it's true mm -hmm. i mean people coming online don't know that the web was better before you know which is crazy mm -hmm. you know tech is supposed to get better all the time but the actual right. user experience is getting worse and worse i mean google's front page sucks i mean <laughs> how can you screw that up <laughs> yeah yeah, um, we've been saying on the network, insurtification, just to, uh, <laughs> but we're we are, and you'll know exactly what, uh, <laughs> what you're talking about. Um, when it comes to the more kind of encrypted, protected protocols like this, what about content moderation? Because this is something that, you know, becomes a much more difficult uh, task when you're talking about encrypted, you know, technologies like this, have they shed any sort of light ahead of the event uh, next week on how they plan to tackle that? I think that's one of the most interesting issues and one of the hardest. It's hard for everybody. Anybody who does anything on the Internet has to think about uh, moderation, um, in part for legal reasons and in part, you know, because it'll deteriorate and get horrible if, there, if there's nothing. So they've had to think about this really hard. And the people who've been involved in the policy discussions about this, um, you know, said, said that in some ways it's terrifying, in some ways it's liberating because they mentioned federation you know lots of people are doing federation mastodon is is part of the fediverse 
Um, and in, you know, the appeal of that is you can have your own community with its own rules. Um, and if you don't like it, you can go to another server, but it also means that there it, it's kind of a mess and you can't count on stuff lasting and their number and the big companies can sort of push off responsibility, uh, to, uh, you know, a, a given node, uh, you can't get away with that. Um, in something that's completely distributed, like like Valid. So one of the decisions that they've made is that in the first iteration of their own social networking app, and I, they encourage other people to do different social networking apps, it will be invite. It'll be by invite only. So um, I, you know, I'm going to pick the people I want in my social network, and therefore I'm not going to have mad stalkers show up and you know, you know, call me racial slurs. And that's the, you know that that's that's one of the decisions that they've been made. I think there are a lot of others and, and there's some still in the works and they're inviting other people to join in the discussion and thrash this out. But, it, you know, it's a tough issue, but, um, you know, they're providing the tools and you can build something crappy with it or something terrific with it, uh, or at least try. So it'll be up to the individual app developers to make most of these calls. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. The training industry's completion rate is barely 30%. ACI Learning blows its competitors away with an over 80% completion rate. Don't settle for subpar boring training. This is what IT pros want. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com slash twit for more information on a free two-week training trial for your team.